Hello and welcome to the Massac Report. I'm Carl Bodner and I'm pleased to once again serve as your host. As always, we have our regular panelists, Catherine Simonic and Gretchen Bonofsky. The topic our panelists will address for this program will be the question that asks if the pros for starting high school a half hour to an hour later outweigh the cons of that idea. This is not a new idea. In fact, there are several districts within our region that have adopted this idea. Those districts include Wilton, Greenwich, and Newtown. Our intent is to address several specifics that need to be taken into account if such a change is to be considered for our district. Such a change impacts not only the school community, but also the community at large. Let's begin by having our panelists express their thoughts about the science behind such a change that has a direct impact upon learning. So, Catherine, let's begin with your thoughts about considering learning amongst the spectrum of ages. Well, so, we have our body clock, or circadian rhythm, our 24-hour body clock, and all of us have one. However, when you transition from a child into a teenager and you enter puberty, your body clock shifts forward. Therefore, it makes it very difficult for us as teenagers to be able, or high schoolers in general, to be able to fall asleep earlier and also wake up earlier. And since we go through this period where we're just up so late, we're forced to also wake up early from being able to, from having to go to high school so early. Therefore, it messes us, messes us completely up and we're very tired. And this is also the science behind why our moods become so irritable since we are so tired during the day. And also, one solution to this would be that your body clock, it can reset itself. That is a thing. However, in order to have this re reset, you have to have the lights from natural daylight entering your eyes in order to tell you it's time to wake up. It's earlier in the day, it's time to wake up, to change your clock. However, as high schoolers, we're forced to wake up before the sun rises, get on a bus, and sit in classrooms all day, some which don't have windows. Therefore, we don't get that time to focus our eyes on natural daylight. Even if it's coming through the windows, you're staring at a paper on your desk. Therefore, you don't get that natural light, and you're not able to reset your clock, therefore staying in a state of constant tiredness, which doesn't help our learning experience at all. Gretchen, um, should I assume you're in agreement with most of what has been said by Catherine? And yes. what other thoughts do you have that go along with the factual validation as to why this could be considered a good idea? I mean, Kate has pretty much said it all. Um, we do have this biological clock, the our circadian rhythm, as she stated before, that makes it very, very difficult for teenagers to wake up before um, about 9 a.m., I would say. So us getting up at 6 and having to go to bed earlier, supposedly, but we can't fall asleep until closer to 11 p.m. or midnight makes it very, very difficult to function during the school day. And should we, or is it safe for us to assume that um, there are many students who are up till 11 o'clock because, like yourselves, as students who work or students who are athletes, you're literally up doing homework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get out of practice or out of your job, you have something to eat. If you're trying to be a dedicated learner, you're caught in this bind. Right, yes. And, you know, we shouldn't just assume all the kids are going to be sitting there playing video games. And even if they're not doing their homework, they tend to go to bed at the same time mm -hmm. or oh, fall yeah. asleep at yes. the same time. So I think that's an important factor. Now let's take into account a few predictable matters that arise with uh, when a district makes this change. And oh, by the way, I wanted to mention, I recently read an article in the Chronicle of Higher Education that in China, one of the things they're doing is building their newer schools so that they even have roof, uh, on the roof they have windows to get more light, sunlight, natural light into the classrooms for the full day. Which makes sense. Which because is interesting because as you indicated, we probably have a third of our classrooms have no windows. That's yes. correct. And it's not always, and plus we sit in furniture that's ridiculously not designed 
to be sad and if they're designed to last 30 years. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny. But anyhow, I apologize for that. Let's go back to the two extra, uh, two issues that are absolutely predictable. One is bus, bus schedules and the other is extracurricular activities that include sports, robotics, drama, working after school. So as a student athlete, mm -hmm. what thoughts can you share about this? Well, strictly from a sports perspective, the change in schedules wouldn't affect necessarily um, the team of the high school, but rather it would affect your scheduling with all the other teams that you try to play games with. So if your high school get, gets out later and a team is coming to play you at home, their, their game's going to be later as opposed to right after school for them. Or if you're planning an away game and the, t um, the other team makes a time, you might have to get out of school earlier and miss some of your classes in order to be at warm-ups on time and thus be prepared for the game. But isn't that already to some degree being done when uh, student teams have to be dismissed early to get to New Milford or New Fairfield or Wesleyan University for the swim team or things of that nature? It doesn't happen as often as you may think. For example, for track, I have is the track is the only sport that I've gotten out of school early for before and that's just because purely the meets take like six hours so with other sports I don't really see that be that's not usually an issue necessarily except for um, track meets that are held on weekdays that involve school. What about basketball where you have three female teams three male teams one gym two games a week is, is that still work, or would it actually be better that the student athletes could possibly perform better? I'd say that the performance gain that you get from sleeping enough hours a night and sleeping at the right time of night, which is also crucial, because if you go to bed at 10 and wake up at 6, you're getting your 8 hours, but you're not getting your 8 hours during the time that a teenager is meant to sleep. So if you're getting that 8 hours at the time you're meant to by sleeping in later, the performance of your athletics is just going to be that much greater, which I think would outweigh, even if you maybe lose a bit of practice time, I think your work ethic and your performance during a practice or a game would just be that much better, and that, that would outweigh losing a bit of practice time or losing a game. Now, my understanding in terms of the science of psychology, uh, you have a situation where there's more than one kind of sleep. You mm -hmm. can have restful sleep and non-restful sleep. Yes. where you get nine hours but you wake up exhausted for some reason. Does that ever happen to either one of you? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Last night I woke up at 3 a.m. and then 4 a.m. and then I gave it 6 a.m. and I expected a delay but that didn't happen so I was exhausted and I was already exhausted waking up at 6 a.m. to come take a midterm. What would, what would we do for students if we were to make this kind of adjustment uh, to facilitate needs of students like yourself who have jobs after school and employees have an expectation of you. Would we, what would you suggest we do? Do we, do we before engaging this kind of scheduling, um, meet with businesses in the community and try to have them accept that they would have to, to have students start, because we get out early, mm -hmm. that students would not be able to start at 2.30, they might have to start at 3.00. Yeah, I think you would have to send out some kind of notice to all the employers that we have to change the times of our, our school and that is not to the fault of your employee, the student, and to kindly consider taking them in later. And of course, um, with my job, it's the, the business, I work for an insurance company and they run from maybe 8.39 to 5, so, or 5.30. Therefore, if we pushed it back too far, that might affect a job like mine where they're not open till that late. However, if it was only a little bit, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, it shouldn't pose any problem, I wouldn't think. Right, we're not talking, I mean, the maximum time we're talking about potentially is an hour. Mm -hmm. exactly. But it's more likely to be 30 to 45 minutes. And it's like one more period in the day. Yes. And you know, I've taught for 51 years, and we've always had students who work. Uh, but, you know, we had times where we got out even earlier than we now. 10 of 2 we got out. We also had times where we went to 2.30, and somehow students still found jobs. 
So um, my guess is that the job market would still have some ability to it um, as long as, as a community at large, there was an understanding of this. Definitely. And you, know, you might just have to be a little more quick if you had two and a half hours at the job instead of three hours at the job. Mm -hmm. So we have to work from there. Now, if we take our next point of view, and that is the busing, what do you think would be ways to deal with that, to comply with our busing needs when that's also a budgetary need in terms of we can only have so big a fleet of buses? So would you respond to that first? Well, I don't think that you, there would be a matter of changing how many buses you have or how many drivers you have or any of that. You can keep all of that the same, but I think all you need to do is switch around the routes of who gets picked up first and who doesn't. Therefore, trying to, instead of getting having the high school kids being picked up first, have them be picked up when the elementary kids get picked up or the middle school kids get picked up. Just pushing them back a little bit. Because naturally, younger kids wake up earlier. They want to wake up earlier. And I'm sure most parents understand and know that. And so what's the point of having your kid being waking up so early and being energetic to have them sit around until after the tired high school kids and middle school kids get on the bus and go to school, then they get to go to school. Why not have them go first if they're already up and energetic? I mean, I've noticed myself when I drive over to the alternative school once a week to work with those students on their capstone, and I'm behind middle school buses, they're like all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, the high school kids, when they get dropped them off, it's like <laughs> Mr. Droop yeah, walking in the door. What do you think? I mean, because we, we have to deal with the money factor. Right. But what do you think about this change of busing time? Well, I agree completely. We, we, all we would have to do is rotate around who goes to school first. And as Katie said, elementary school kids are very, very energetic in the morning, and so are a few, quite a few middle school kids. So if you were to put elementary school at the time of high school and then maybe put high school at the time of middle school or high school at the time of elementary school, some sort of swap like that in schedule would just allow for um, better sleeping. And then also with the elementary school, lots of parents cannot find before school care for their kids because those programs are less available than after school programs. So if their school day was just in general to start earlier, it would allow for those parents to get ready for the day and go to work while their kid is already at school. My, I'm thinking as you're speaking, and my guess is that if I have young children, my, my daughters are in their 50s, but in the, the options for before and after school care facilities was really next to nothing, uh, you know, going back in that far in time. But now I think there's more options, but even many of the employees of those types of facilities may have kids to get off to school. So it's hard to ask them to start much earlier than they're starting, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can remember there was a in-home daycare center on my street for several years. The woman was a certified child psychologist. She had two children. She took in, I think, six or seven children. Uh, but there were children being dropped off. You know, she tried to be compliant with parent needs. And there were very young children being dropped off at 6 in the morning. But that's the way it had to be done. So we, there are, we can't resolve everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. But in your frame of thinking, this could be doable, and it might even have some benefits for the non-high school as well as for the parent community. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that's something we have to take into account. Because when I spoke with several of our faculty persons who are in that situation, that was their biggest thing. They, they seemed to say that it was much harder and much more expensive to find good services for children before school. In uh, many communities, it's the public schools that have the before school and after school care. Mm -hmm. But when you have children that are toddlers or even 10-month-old infants, that's you need a, a lot of different types of care mm -hmm. and it's you know is you're leaving your children more hours of a day with some adults you hardly know uh, so that's another variable I would think mm -hmm. you know I mean, again I'm talking from a grandfather point of view and a teacher point of view 
Now, I also took time to talk to some colleagues who are in uh, such a change might impact special education, their programs and needs. And overall, the response I was offered suggests that the logistics are workable and, in fact, could be friendlier for managing the off-campus work program. Have any of you, or either of you, I should say, have some ideas of input off about this? What do you think? Well, well, I don't know much about special education programs. I could see how it could be beneficial, especially if a child with needs, um, say they are in high school, but they still need quite a lot of support. Um, it might be hard for them to function early in the morning. So allowing them also the extra sleep and a daytime that starts later every day for school, I could see how that could be very beneficial. What do you think? Well, I'm in complete agreement with that. I think any shape or form, special education program or not, if you're trying to facilitate a better learning experience for any high school aged student, then starting later would be better just to keep them more awake in order to process the information they're being given better, learn how to cooperate or work with the community better. Well, in some of the stronger needy children I know get here a little later on their buses. So that's already been taken into account with the scheduling from what I can see. Uh, and then they have that off-campus work program, but that doesn't start till I think, fourth period in the day. And they go off-campus for about three periods, go to Big Y or Waterview, and they learn functional work tasks. And I, th I think that that actually, I mean, a lot of businesses aren't open at 7 in the morning unless you're Dunkin' Donuts or something. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be able to accommodate all of our needy kids. So it could be something where there is compliance with whatever the special needs laws are, but also friendlier for the programs to be operative. So, I, I mean, I think there's there. What do you have any closing thoughts you would want to share? Um, I guess. I mean, if you uh, could be in this kind of school change environment, what would be your thoughts about it if all of a sudden this actually did come to fruition? I guess my biggest concern would be time after school because of the rigorous classes that I do take and also being an athlete myself, I already put three to four hours worth of my time into the day strictly for athletics, whether that be working out on my own or preparing for a team practice and actually practicing, or whether that be homework, and I also spend like four hours of that a day. So that's a good eight hours after school that I need um, to be free. And if the day is pushed back, it brings concern to me that I won't have enough time to finish everything I need to do. So it's not the academic part of your day, it's the extracurricular part of your day. Right. But I know that I benefit from getting more sleep, if that makes sense, but also I would worry that I would run out of time to do things I needed to do. It, would you think that time management and efficiency could be, might be improved? I think so, especially with an improved sleep. I might be more efficient with my time and then maybe I won't spend four hours on my homework. Maybe it's only three or two because I get things done faster. So your focus is captured a little yes. better. What about your situation? If such a schedule was available, do you think it's something you would like? I think I would because I look at it as right now I'm already tired for most of the day and I do spend a lot of time after school doing work, the gym, and then homework. So I'm working and doing all this stuff that I need to do up until the time I'm going to bed. So I figured I would rather, if I'm already doing that, I'd rather trade off for being able to do it more efficiently and not feeling as tired, feeling healthier, and doing everything till I go to bed than going through the frustration of being tired and probably doing everything more slowly and not as efficient. I'd rather have that trade off because I'm already doing things until I go to bed. Okay. That makes sense. It does make sense, you know, and I think it's something that's always worth consideration and it, 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 since we, we couldn't just jump into this, right? I'm sure you agree with that. Yes. We'd have to have, do what we did with Mr. Ryder and I starting the capstone. We spent a year and a half just visiting people in the community, workplaces, talking to coaches, talking to 
faculty. We had evenings where we came here to answer questions of parents. Because you've got to make sure everybody's on board and everybody sees uh, some compliance that this, this has some benefits to it. The majority rules. Okay, it sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right, so our time is up, and let me thank panelists Gretchen and Catherine, uh, as well as you, our audience, and for sharing your time with us. We hope you will join us for the next Massac Report.